the project for today was, well, to be honest, on the risky side. We, we had a gate valve, and it was starting to rust. And I was quite concerned about its quality. So I decided to go ahead and replace it while it was in the water on the boat. So today is that project. I had already removed the battery box, so I had access to it. I already moved the muffler. I'll move it out of the way a little bit more later to get to it better, but have my wood plug ready in case the boat starts flooding like crazy for whatever reason and I can't get to it in time. Um, and I had already started to break loose the gate valve. Uh, the reason I had to I had to break it loose first was to see if it was going to move if it was going to move separately. And when I tried that, it actually moved quite easily. So I decided to go ahead with the project in the water. Now, if it would have not moved with just regular wrench effort, then I would not have done it in the water. It would just been too risky. And, well, I don't want to sink the boat over a $33 gate valve. So um, I got it loose, got it all set. Had my wood plug ready, had the new one ready, had the old one ready. And aside from having a little bit of an issue screwing it back on, it went pretty slick. Wait, what you'll see is I'll get some Teflon tape on there. It's not the best tape job that I've ever done, but it had to be done. There was also a little bit of scaling inside the valve. Overall, the material on the through hole itself looked very thick. It was a very good material. Uh, it's only a three-quarter inch intake for my for the engine, so I'm just glad that glad that it wasn't a lot bigger and a lot more expensive so it's kind of nice that it's only three quarters you can see even if the valve broke clean off um, the flooding is so so slow I doubt that a natural flow where it is and how wide it is I don't believe that it would be more than oh, somewhere around a gallon to two gallons a minute the pump you'll hear on here kick on later it's actually a um, 10 gallon a minute plug uh, pump so it should come through quite well but you can see I got the scale out of it it's flowing a lot better now maybe it's three or four gallons a minute but not more than that worked really well uh, wood plug fits really well so if anything happened and it broke off I know that that wood plug will do it and that wood plug is going to be permanently attached to that valve by a string shortly so that it's right there if I ever need it if it ever breaks off there's a lot of through holes on the boat, and there'll be some that I actually get rid of. Um, I'm going to say get rid of. I found the best way to get rid of a valve is simply to simply close the old valve, and I'm going to go an extra step, and I'm going to plug it up from the outside when the boat's hauled out. So I'll actually be closing off about four or five through holes, all said and done, with um, 5200 jammed in as best I can they should never flow again. Uh, there was no reason for most of them. Two of them are for toilet exits. One of them is a sink drain that's below the water line. It absolutely makes no sense. So the sink, shower, and everything else is now going to drain into a central box and I'll pump it overboard. I'm going to try to keep everything above the water line. Um, what you see here initially is I'm having trouble getting the threads to start. And it turns out there was just a little bit of um, debris on there. And that's what was actually giving me the trouble here. Uh, a couple other projects I have going on the boat at the same exact time. I'm trying to redo the exhaust. I'm trying to redo all the water lines. Put new water lines on. Put new exhaust hose in. The water lift muffler is almost brand new, so I'm going to leave it. I'm going to put a new battery box in here. The old one was a 4D. It's just for a 62 horsepower engine. That is drastically oversized. There's no reason to have a 4D battery on something that size. Just no reason. So that one's gone, and now I've got a box that I'm putting in. They'll take a 24 to a 31 group size. And, well, that's what it's getting. It's getting probably a 27 group size.
now the valve is in. It's nicely seated. The camera's done being sprayed with water. <laughs> uh, sorry about the light situation. Uh, there'll, be, there'll be lights added to the engine bay later on. They're actually quite expensive for a waterproof LED light. I'm going to add that. I'm probably going to add a camera as well so I can keep an eye on the situation below decks. I'll be able to see that there's no flooding going on when we're underway, under motor or under sail. I'll be able to just click a button on the chart plotter. I'll be able to see inside the engine room. I'll be able to see the shaft gland. I'll be able to see the back of the engine, the through hull. Just make sure that everything is tight and not flooding the engine room as we go. Could very easily be missed if you're not careful. So I plan on checking that at least once every four hours just to double check when we're sailing. And if we're underway, I'll probably I'll probably minimize it and keep it on the same size. I'm just checking right now to make sure that the valve is not leaking water. And I think what I saw right there that it was. So I'm going to go ahead and redo the seat because it was not seated properly. I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with the threads here. Before I can thread it on anymore. And about here I noticed that on the other side there's just a little bit of calcium buildup. So we'll get the calcium off of there and get the new valve on. Shouldn't be any issue. The wood plugs actually work very well. If I took a hammer and tapped that in, I'm betting there'd be no leaking at all going on. So that's always a good thing. As you can see right now, without it, without it tapped in all the way, there is actually a little bit of water weeping past the plug. So it definitely needs to be smacked in with a hammer. It's not something you can get in hand tight. Of course, I didn't go cranking it down there because well, I need to take it out when I'm done. There's no way around that one. So the project's almost done now. I'm pretty happy about it. The valve's going to screw right on. Some of the things you see here, um, right around my hand, the big hose up into the right corner, that's actually the new secondary diaphragm bilge pump. Uh, there's going to be a total of three in the engine bay. Two diaphragm and one crash pump. Like if we have an absolute emergency, it's going to be wired up on a really heavy duty switch so I can just throw the switch and it'll suck all the water out of there. That one's rated at 12 gallons a minute. And that's an actual flow amount, not a theoretical. And then there's going to be an 8,000 gallon per hour that's permanently mounted as well. It's going to be attached directly to the battery, directly to the switch. Big, big breaker. And I'm hoping that between that and the other two, the engine room won't be able to flood any significant amount. And we should be able to keep it float and going for a long time. The alternator on the engine is now 100 amps. So it should be able to keep multiple, multiple pumps going constantly. So that'll be a good thing while I'm trying to shove toilet wax into the glands or whatever I'm trying to do to stop the leaking. I don't think we'll have any issue with a flood on the boat while we're on on the boat underway. But as you can see, the uh, valve looks very good. Some of the Teflon is still sticking out underneath the valve, so there's enough Teflon on there. There's no leaking going on, so that's good. It's a nice clean valve, nice clean installation. I'm going to get my 90 degree or tailpipe on there, get the bonding attached back, and that's it.